Hi! It's Ander, or FBI Open Up, and in this video, I'll be explaining what stages you should farm for whatever thing you're looking for in Azerlane. Be it some good equipment, some notable ships, some more gold, or just some more experience. For each stage that I do mention in this video, I'll give you the strengths of why they are a good stage to farm, so that you can decide for yourself of whatever will suit you the best depending on your situation. I'll be organizing this video starting from the lowest chapter and working my way up to the higher ones, and at the end of the video I'll be giving you the top 3 stages to farm, so check the timestamps in the pinned comment if you don't have time to spare. With that being said, let's start that list of good stages to farm! First up, we will be starting from some stages in Chapter 3. Chapter 3 is where you can start really farming for these stages because this is where you're going to go and start getting some good purple gears. So for instance in Chapter 2 you can only get blue gears, but Chapter 3 starts when you can get some nice purple gears. The first stage to mention is 3-2 right here, because you can get two very good purple equipments, one being the purple steam catapult right here, which is the third best for carriers and their auxiliary slots, so it's very good to have, as well as the best dive bomber in the game, the SB2C Helldiver. Now the purple steam catapult is one of the top carrier auxiliary equipments that give a very nice aviation boost, which lets your carrier deal more damage. It is only beaten out by the gold steam catapult obviously since it is a better rarity, but it is also beaten out by, well okay so here's the gold steam catapult, and it is also beaten out by the aviation oil tank. The aviation oil tank has the exact same stats as a purple steam catapult, except it has an added bonus of this ability right here that increases the HP of equipped aircraft by 120. But since in the beginning, since you won't have access to those other two things, if you're just starting out in Azure Lane, this is definitely a good place to go and get some good auxiliary equipments for your new carrier. Now, speaking of carriers, in the dive bomber slot, it is the best dive bomber right here, the SP2C Helldiver, Getting these for your carriers will greatly increase their damage, and it is highly recommended to farm here until you have at least one SP2C Helldiver per carrier in your fleet. Now these Helldivers are super good because they have three bombs, one being a massive 2,000 pound bomb right here, and the other two being a 500 pound bomb. Together they can deal massive damage that is able to hit the entire screen, giving you some really consistent damage and it's just ability to go and hit all the ships on that screen is just super good. So even though it is purple, it beats out some gold dive bombers, well actually all the gold dive bombers, such as the gold BTD-1 destroyer, where it's only two bombs instead of the Helldivers 3, mean that it's a lot less consistent and it may leave some ships on the screen completely undamaged. So due to this inconsistency, even though these bombs may hit harder than the Helldiver, the destroyer's inconsistency with its only two bombs will make it less desirable. So if I were a beginner, I would make it a priority to farm 3-2 right here. To go and get the Steam Catapult and the Helldiver, well definitely the Helldiver, since they are so good and they will be used for the rest of your Azerlane career. Now on top of that you can also get Hiryu right here, which is a top PvP carrier, but in PvE she is just kind of mediocre, so if you're into PvE PvP, then you can always take a look at Hiryu. Now the other chapter 3 stage, as you can always guess, is going to be 3-4 right here. Now 3-4 is the first stage, also known as the Fox Mines, well the first stage where you can get a super rare drop from the boss node. Now these ships are obviously going to be Akagi right here, and Kaga, and they are very good and they are also called foxes, which is why the, the stage 3-4 is also referred to the fox mines. They're actually very good ships and they will, they're not necessarily required for you to beat the rest of the game, but they are very good to have. Now to use Akagi and Kaga effectively, you will need to have both of them, since their skills will require the other to be in the same fleet as them. If I could go and find them really quickly in my fleets. Yep, okay, so here. So take a look at Akagi for example. Her first skill is this, which is very very good. Decreasing the first airstrike is super good. And this is the really big thing where you need them together. 
Together, they will have they will each get a 35% bonus aviation boost, giving them a massive amount of a damage increase. Even in PvP, Akagi and Kaga, along with usually Nagato, are usually seen run even in the top ranks. So they are actually very good ships to have, and if you can get them, they are going to be a very good addition for your fleet. Now as an added bonus of farming 3-4, you can also get the very 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 solid purple repair toolkit. It is the most versatile and the most, well, one of the best auxiliary gears in the entire game. It gives an extra 500 HP at max level, along with recovering a small amount of HP every 15 seconds, which greatly increases a ship's survivability. It is insanely good on people with low HP ships, such as destroyers and battle monitors, and it's still a solid option for ships with higher HP too. Now also you can get the purple F4U Corsair, which is the best budget purple fighter that you can get until you get gold fighters. Oh, my voice just cracked. Anyway, when you do get gold fighters such as the Golden Repu, the Sea Fang, the Hellcat, or of course the best in the game, the F4U Corsair, if I could find... Let's see... Okay, Ryuho. <laughs> So in the best slot, of course, is going to be the F4U Pirate Squad Corsair. But if you do have that purple one, if you don't have any of these gold planes yet, the purple F4U Corsair that you can get from 3-4 is your best alternative. So getting some of these for your carriers will also be very, very good. But until then, if you don't have any golds, you can always get this purple F4U, and it will be just fine. On to chapter Four, the stages I'd like to mention would be stage 4-3 and stage 4-4. Stage 4-3 is good because it drops Erebus and Terror. They are awesome backlines for farming fleets. Check out my Fletcher Fleet video that I just did if you would like to know more about them. Anyway, Terror and Erebus are both very good because of their infinite darkness skill that provides a very powerful barrage that is capable of just basically winning the battle once they do proc. They're super good for farming 3-4 because they are also a battle monitor, meaning that their oil cost is very low. So moving on to stage 4-4, four, four. this stage is right here very good because you can get Unicorn and Cleveland, who are both extremely useful ships. Unicorn is an incredible support carrier that can heal your vanguard fleet, as well as provide a reload buff to them. So if we could go to Unicorn real quick. You can see that it heals their entire vanguard by 8%, as well as providing a reload buff too. So this is actually very good, and Unicorn is used for a lot of things, even in the late game. Cleveland, right here, is also a very solid light cruiser that can deal some extremely good DPS and buff her entire fleet, be it their assault order right here. And anti-air mode is very useful for dealing with some planes if they are, you're finding it troublesome. So they're both very good ships, and if you do like them, then you should definitely consider farming 4-4. Now in Chapter 5, there is a lot of stuff to be offered. Starting with Stage 5-1, you can see that you can now get gold equipment from these. The Gold Twin 127mm right here is extremely good, as well as you can also get the Purple 127mm. They're top tier firepower focused destroyer main guns. So they're super good to have, and you should definitely be using them on your destroyers if you do have them. Now along with that, on stage 5-1, I don't have it unlocked, but you can also get Helena from here. And Helena is a top tier light cruiser that has an ability to basically debuff the entire enemy's team by 40%, increasing their damage taken by 40%, which is a massive debuff. And that skill is insanely good at making your entire fleet deal a ton more damage. So Helena is a great ship and you can get her at 5-1, along with farming those blueprints for the gold and purple twin 127mm, which are very good destroyer guns. Now stage 5-2 right here, Santa Cruz Skies, is good because you can get the gold Hellcat, which is a top tier gold fighter that is better than the one on 3-4. So if you want an upgrade over that purple F4U Corsair that you found in 3-4, you can get the very cool gold Hellcat from here. Along with that you can also get Queen Elizabeth, 
who is a very interesting person that gives buffs to almost every single stat for every single Royal Navy ship in your fleet. She's not really used too much, I don't see her around too much, but if you do want to build a Royal Navy fleet that is focused on just Royal Navy, she will provide a lot of support for that team through her amazing buffs that she gives out. So if I could go and locate my Queen Elizabeth right here. As you can see, she has one skill, the Queen's Orders, and you can see that for yourself, it boosts a lot of stats. <laughs> so if you're making a Royal Navy team, be sure to have Queen Elizabeth, you can get her from stage 5-2, as well as the build pool from somewhere. The last stage to mention on chapter 5 would be 5-4, because it drops the gold Bofors AA gun, which is a super solid top tier anti-air gun. You can also get three very good ships that I have not unlocked. Well, I did unlock one of them. Unicorn is one of them, as I've already mentioned. She is a top tier support carrier that heals your vanguard and provides that reload buff. And also you can get Rodney and Nelson from here. Now Rodney and Nelson are also just like a more expensive version of Terror and Erebus, which they also have enhanced stats. So for instance, Rodney right here, they have Big 7. And basically, it's a 40% chance to fire a very powerful barrage. And this barrage is super good, and their stats are very good too. You can use Rodney and Nelson for your Monarch PR farm. I personally used Rodney for a lot of it, that's why she's at 116. So they are both pretty decent in many ways. Now in chapter 6, this is where map drops get even better, because starting from here, if you click on a stage, you can actually get purple parts now. So you can use these purple parts to upgrade your gear past plus 6, which will make them drastically better. Speaking of stage 6-1, it is an insanely good place to farm because you can get these purple parts as previously mentioned, along with all the other stages that are higher up from here, as well as giving the chance to get the gold SG radar which is a super useful and important auxiliary gear that is wonderful on battleships, giving them increased evasion and accuracy. Now, most importantly, the Gold SG Radar gives a very nice 12% boost to avoiding ambushes. Whoops, I clicked on Washington. Anyway, if I go to someone like Nagato, I think she has one equipped. Yes, she does. So anyway, it will decrease your ambush chance by 12% and increase your ability to evade your ambush if you do actually manage to get ambushed. Anyway, it's very good for avoiding those ambushes as well as giving some very good stats to your battleship. You can also use the SG Radar on other people. The battleships are just a class that benefits very greatly with the SG Radar. Now you can also get two very good ships from here. I don't have them unlocked, but you can get Vestal who is one of the two repair ships in the game. She is useful for healing your team, especially in harder stages like Chapter 13, where she can use her 2A guns, making her very valuable. Helena, once again, is that debuff queen that is an insane light cruiser that will increase the damage taken by enemies by 40%. Now moving on to stage 6-4, it is another infamous stage where you can get another super rare ship drop, this time being everyone's favorite dog, Yudachi. Now Yudachi is sadly unlike Akagi and Kaga, she's not that good as she is completely overshadowed by the much easier to obtain Laffy Retrofit, because Laffy Retrofit basically does everything Yudachi does, but better. Now you can also get the gold 610mm torpedo, which is the best for manual play because it has the highest single torpedo damage in the game, but there are only 4 torpedoes instead of 5 as you would have for a normal quintuple torpedo, so it is very important to hit all of them, which is why this is the best for manual play. Now for chapter 7, the shining stage would definitely go to stage 7-2, as it is nicknamed the gold farm, because after you do 3 battles, 4 mystery nodes will pop up and each of them will give you an extra chance of giving you extra gold. For example, I've just finished my third battle of 7-2, so let's go and see these four nodes in action. As you can see, there is one, two, three, four mystery nodes that pop up. And if you're lucky, you can get some gold from it, as you can see right here. It'll usually range between 90 to 200 per node. So if you're lucky, you can get a lot of extra gold, and this is definitely 
the best place to farm for gold. So there we go. We got 200, that, basically 200 coins this time. So that's a very good 7-2 run. Yeah. So anyway, once you do that, usually you would retreat. And then you would do it again. So stage 7-2 is a great place to farm for experience, as well as the purple parts that you can get, as well as the amazing gold twin 113mm, also known as the gold Roomba. It's another top tier anti-air gun that is used on basically everyone, so it's an added bonus for farming the stage. Overall, 7-2 is just basically the best overall farming stage in the entire game due to how many resources you can get from here. I still farm this stage when an event is not going on. So keep your eyes out and definitely make sure that you will farm stage 7-2 eventually. Aw yeah. So now chapter 8 is all about collectors and waifus. It's got no amazing ships or equipment, but it does have some stage-only ships that are pretty cute. So, moving from stage 8-1, we can go and see that you can get Inazuma right here, who is basically Rem from ReZero. Stage 8-2, you can get Ikazuchi, who is basically Ram from ReZero. And finally, stage 8-4, if I could go back, can drop Maya who for some odd reason is the only Takao sister that has white hair instead of black hair. Very interesting. For chapter 9, there is nothing too notable to mention in particular, but just for you in the comments gravity hurts, I will mention that you can also get Nicholas from stage 9-3 right here. I personally have not gotten her yet, but you can get her, so farm stage 9-3 if you want Nicholas. Now, in chapter 10, it is a big jump in difficulty for farming compared to chapter 9, so only do this if you really want a certain ship on that stage. One particular ship you can get is from 10-2. You can get the stage exclusive Honolulu right here, who I did not unlock yet, so I probably should be grinding this stage a little bit more. She's a blue ship, and she is a good waifu. Now, stage 10-4 is Jinsu's stage. Jitsu is an insanely good, and I mean insanely good, light cruiser. She is a staple in the IJN torpedo fleet due to her amazing torpedo buffs that she provides to all light cruisers as well as destroyers. She deals incredibly high damage to herself with her high torpedo stat right here for a light cruiser, and she has pretty good firepower too. She has a retrofit too, which will boost her stats even more. And her retrofit skill, the Unyielding Jinsu, will go and give her 20% reduced damage taken and even more torpedo buffs for the whole vanguard. So this just means that she can take MVP on basically any stage due, due to the sheer DPS that she can provide. She's an incredible ship, but do be warned that this stage is not too farming friendly. So it will eat up your oil and if you're unlucky like me, who did not get her until probably on like 200th or 300th run, the grind will take very long and you will probably fall into depression. But don't worry, once you get Jinsu, your mood will shoot back up, I promise. Now in chapter 11, it gets even harder to farm, so just make sure that you have a good enough team if you want to take down one of these stages. 11-2 has the easiest boss in the chapter. You can go and get some good experience from here, and you can also get the stage exclusive Agano, which I do not have. She's not too good stat wise, but she's very nice waifu wise. Stage 11 3 is also one of those ship things where you can also get Sendai right here, who is another Jinsu class light cruiser. She's pretty cute, and she has a retrofit, so that's pretty nice. 11 4 is interesting. Even though Sendai is the boss here, Sendai gets dropped from 11-3, so don't get confused. Because 11-4, you can get Columbia instead. <laughs> Columbia is a super cute Cleveland class light cruiser that you can get. In chapter 12, it will obviously get even more difficult, but the experience you can get is very good if you can handle these stages. I would recommend farming stage 12-4 right here, because it is the last stage that you can consistently farm without dying, Cough, cough, ch chapter 13, and it gives the most experience so far. This is my go-to stage if I want to farm a lot of experience for my PR ships, and if there's no event going on, I will go to stage 12-4. You can get the last super rare sister, Takao sister here, Chokai, who I still don't have even though I've grinded here for an eternity. Yostar, you gotta please bless me, bless up. 
Overall, this is the best stage for grinding XP for PR farming since you can get a lot of experience pretty consistently without your ships dying. Now, as a quick mention, if you are farming chapter 13, you are either a god or you are insane because the difficulty spikes up even more drastically here. I can't even farm chapter 13 well, so if you're just up for the challenge, you can get even more XP for your PR ships if you can farm here efficiently. So, but if you're just a person that can't do chapter 13 consistently, like 99% of the Azure Lane community, you can just stick with 12-4 for your PR XP farming. With all of these stages done, as promised, here are my top 3 stages to farm in Azure Lane. Number 3 would go to stage 3-4. Since you can get the two amazing carriers, Akagi and Kaga here, the super versatile repair toolkit that you can use for literally everyone in the whole game, and the budget-friendly purple fighter, the F4U Corsair. In number 2, we'll go all the way up to chapter 12, or stage 12-4, because you can get Chokai, and also because of the amazing amount of experience that you can get, which is super good for PR grinding. And obviously in the number one position would be stage 7-2 here because you can get an amazing amount of gold through those four mystery nodes. It's generally pretty easy to farm. You can literally just have a cast and downs as your vanguard and save a ton of oil. And you can also get everyone's favorite, the gold Roomba. Yay! So yeah. With that covered, that will wrap up my video regarding every single notable stage to farm, as well as their strengths to farm at that particular place. As always, if you found this information helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Don't forget to press that notification bell for my future uploads as well. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered, and I'll try my best to reply. If you haven't yet, come join my Discord server. The link is in the description, as well as my pinned comment. That's all I have for this video, so I'll see you guys later. Hi! As always, this video is sponsored by Bluestacks, and Bluestacks is a free and trusted Android emulator that I use to play Azure Lane on my PC. I use Bluestacks to get better performance on my phone, and it also lets me record YouTube videos for you guys. If you're interested in downloading a good emulator so that you can also play Azure Lane on your computer, click the affiliate link in the description. All you have to do is download Azure Lane through my referral link, and Bluestacks will give this channel a very small commission, so it's a very easy and free way to support the channel as I save for a better mic. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is actually um, intense. Thanks for all the support that you guys have given this channel, and I hope that I can consider can continue to deliver in the future. Bye!